It's more than a year since Ronda Rousey was sensationally knocked out by Holly Holm. It was the first defeat of her career, and she said that she briefly contemplated suicide afterwards, but she vowed to win her title back. Normally, a fight of this magnitude would be preceded by all kinds of hype and hoopla, and the fighters would be all over the airwaves trying to promote it. That's certainly what UFC would prefer. The more promotion, the more subscribers, the more money to be made. But Rousey, who's a bona fide A-lister with a string of Hollywood movies also under her belt, says that she wants to concentrate totally on Friday's fight against the reigning bantamweight champion Amanda Nunez, and UFC has agreed to it. It might hurt them financially in the short run, but if she wins, then it will be worth it. At the point of her defeat, Ronda Rousey was the biggest draw in UFC. Well, before the final build-up to the fight, Rousey did give a couple of interviews, one of which was to ESPN.com's senior writer, Ramona Shelburne, who I'm pleased to say joins us now from L.A. Ramona, thanks for being with us. Um, the loss to Holly Holm hit her very hard. How would you describe her state of mind now? Well, you know, it's it's been over a year, right? And I think you have a process of healing from a loss like that. And I go back to, I interviewed her about three weeks after that loss. And then I interviewed her a year uh, after afterwards. And you see the, the changes in a person, right? And so the first the first interview that we had done, I think it was it was maybe the Friday after Thanksgiving. And so that was, that was two or three weeks after she lost. She was so embarrassed. She was sad. She just, she had sweats on and didn't even want to leave the house. Um, and, and, and I go back to that core emotion, which is simply, you can't take that embarrassment, shame, um, sadness into the octagon again and fight. And so this whole year has really been about her learning to compartmentalize that and get herself back in a place mentally where she can get in the octagon and try to regain her belt. Right, so why isn't she talking up the fight? Because you know that UFC would have preferred her to join the media circus, mm -hmm. as always happens. Well, listen, I have the benefit of having been with Rhonda before that, the, the loss to Holly and now afterwards. And so I saw before how much she did media-wise, like leading into that fight. There was a couple of scandals that sort of followed her into, the, into that fight. But also afterwards, I think she, she really felt like everyone turned on her, which is what happens when you lose, right? I mean, that, that would happen to just about anyone. But in that moment... Um, she just said, you know, I've, I've given so much of my time and energy to building up the sport. I mean, there was no women's UFC before there was Ronda Rousey. They created the division because of her, because she was that big of a star. And before that, she was game for anything. Any interview, no matter how long, she would do it. And I think she kind of said, this time, if I'm starting over, if I'm getting back in that octagon, I've got to do things on my own terms. And so she's done some medium. She did a, she did a couple interviews with Ellen DeGeneres. She did a Conan O'Brien. She did a big, long, extensive access piece with me it wasn't just one interview I, I spent several several sessions with her um, and and she kind of did it on her own terms now listen I, I often cover the NBA right and if somebody did that to me in the NBA and said I'm just not gonna do press conferences I'm not gonna do any of the buildup I'd be upset and I think you know the the UFC writers the MMA writers they have they have a right to feel that way and I think the rest of the yeah. world has a right to wonder why she's not doing it but you come back to where she was last year on top of the world. I mean, there was no bigger female athlete on the planet than Ronda Rousey when she got knocked out. And it's really hard to come all the way back up after you get knocked down that far. Uh, briefly, not every fighter enjoys doing the media. I would imagine there's a concern right. here that she set a precedent that other fighters would like sure. to follow. Sure, the UFC had the similar issue with Conor McGregor when he refused to participate in a press conference before UFC 200, and they pulled him from the card. I mean, that was the one, that was the precedent they set there. Ronda Rousey actually ran into Conor McGregor at a, at a commercial shoot, and she said, hey, listen, you and me need to talk because there's nobody who understands what we're going through besides you and me. And when you get into this situation, you have to negotiate it in advance because you can't do it when it's upon you. Now, whether or not they... Fighters like Ronda Rousey and, and Conor McGregor, the two biggest stars in the sport, can continue to, continue to do this, will really affect things for the UFC going forward as it tries to maintain its, its mainstream status that they've carved out over the last couple of years. Very, very interesting. Ramona Shelburne, thanks very much and enjoy the fight this weekend. You got it.